the minimum penalty is a pressure mayor and that's uh, from 6 years to 12 years in every instance. Uh, so they upgraded it. Okay. Um, Cybercrime, once again. Uh, okay, so our cybercrime, uh, cybercrime prevention act is based on the Council of Europe cybercrime treaty in terms of the definitions of what cybercrimes are. Uh, so there are uh, definitions of uh, what are uh, cybercrimes, such as uh, illegal interception, for example, or forgery. Uh, so these are just generic uh, cybercrimes, I think, that generic an article about uh, 17 crimes that turned over by the, by the uh, cyber crime law. So that's what any cyber crime law, uh, cyber crime you can think about, is covered by that law. Uh, in addition to the, those crimes, they also included a provision on, uh, on spam, or unsolicited commercial uh, communication. Um, now, you should, be, you should be a bit concerned about that, but actually, uh, what the law provides, or if, if you violate the law, you only commit a crime when you send a spam if you don't provide uh, an opt-out uh, in your email and you conceal uh, the source of your email. So, so long as you're upfront about where your email is coming from, can you give the recipient uh, an opportunity to, uh, to opt out of the future messages, then you should be okay so far as the cybercrime law is concerned. Uh, however, you might run into problems with respect to the data privacy law. To the extent that under the data privacy law, uh, you're, when you deal with personal, personal information uh, or you process personal information, uh, you should be careful, otherwise you might be committing uh, a crime actually punishable under the data privacy law. So as I said, commercial uh, communication, uh, the law also punishes cyber squatting. So I don't know how two of you would register domain names uh, where you don't own the same part of those domain names. Uh, now if, that, if what you register is confusingly similar, or the same as a registered trademark, then you are committing crime under the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Uh, it's punishable, it cannot be taken also by a uh, prison mayor. Uh, there's also a provision on um, uh, penalizing identity theft. And I must say that when I looked at it, it was, it was poorly worded because it, it says that if you merely really acquire uh, information or identifying information, uh, you could be punished under the law. Uh, so somebody asked me a question, well, what if you have somebody's name and their email address? And you acquired it, could be technically be uh, penalized under identity theft? I think it seems like it's covered within the language of the statute. Uh, but I imagine um, the, uh, I hope in the IRR, they clarify that when uh, that all the apps mentioned in identity theft, must be preparatory, or there must be proof that it is not in relation to taking advantage of the identity of a particular person. So that, that, that's a problematic provision. Uh, Senator Mingona was uh, concerned about the cyber sex provision. Okay, so there's a cyber sex provision, and what it seeks to penalize uh, is the uh, transmission of the CBU's uh, content, even on one to one communication when it is done for, uh, for favor, for money or favor. Uh, obviously this covers the cyber sex then that you heard about. Uh, the, because the law says whether you directly engage in it or indirectly, you can also be cyber sex then, the people who run them are operating those sites, uh, those uh, events. So, uh, under the, uh, those sites that are operated by uh, individuals, uh, who don't necessarily themselves uh, connect with the with the customers. Interestingly, under the law, uh, interestingly under the law, the one who's been alive is the uh, is the person who sorry, it's not the client, it's the person who provides the service. The people engaging them. Uh, maintenance control operation, directly interacting with any activities of sexual activity, with the agent of computer system for favor of the generation. So if you're the one uh, on the side that gets paid, you're the one who uh, is penalized. But if you're the one paying, you're not penalized under the law. Uh, you are doing it directly with the agent of computer system for favor of the generation. Uh, and then you're not penalized under the law. Uh, if you're doing it indirectly, meaning you're hiring people to do this, if some people have used this as a business, uh, then it's punished under the law. So spam is here after the commercial. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the most uh, 
things of what is the right information, uh, and the right information, uh, supposedly what is started at the last moment, at the request of, uh, well, at the request, well, in the last or so. Uh, when you look at this, actually when I saw this the first time, I was not so concerned because uh, library was already punishable under the revised penal code. And all this said, all this provision says that it's still punishable under the revised penal code. Actually, the problem isn't there. The problem is in section uh, 6 and 7, in year 6 and 7, where it says that if you uh, violate the revised penal code uh, or any law, okay, so if you violate any law, uh, all crimes no, under special laws or under the grant by, through, and with the use of ICTs, okay, then you then that is a cyber crime. Okay, that is a cyber crime. And the penalty imposed shall be one degree higher. Okay? So all crimes now are cyber crimes if you commit them by, through, and with the use of ICTs. Okay? So murder, right? Um, if you murder with a gun, that's not with the use of ID. If you're punished under the device, you know, for murder. If you murder using a bomb triggered by a cell phone device, uh, by an electronic device, then you're punishable under the device, you know, and under um, this law, plus what will be higher. And under Section 7, the liability is independent of each other. The prosecution under this act shall be without prejudice to any liability for violation of any provision under the right penal code. It's independent. And for the people uh, with respect to libel, they, this is where they speak out. Because libel is punishable uh, at a minimum of six months, maximum of four years, six months. Um, now, if you only violate the law once, you qualify for probation if the penalty is less than six years. So that means that if you're facing a libel suit, Worst case scenario for you, you don't go to jail. You can just uh, ask for probation and uh, the, the judge will impose conditions, but you don't need to go to jail. The problem here is that they just increase the penalty one degree higher, and one degree higher takes you so from six months to four years, takes you from six years to ten years. Right? So now, now you can't apply for probation anymore because the penalty is higher than six years. Not to mention, you'll be penalized under the first six months to four years also. So when you accumulate both penal both convictions under Section 7, and they're independent of each other, you're now liable to go to jail for a minimum of 6 years and 6 months, so a maximum of 14 years and 2 months. So the very heavy penalty for libel, which according to the United Nations should not only be, uh, should be decriminalized. And indeed there are many um, uh, bills in Congress right now to decriminalize uh, libel. So that's where the freedom of expression issue comes in. 